Hey guys, we're gonna be going over creating loud rough mixes. Now you may be asking yourself, why do I need to create loud uh, rough mixes? Well, when you have a client um, with you, make sure that you always want to send him or her with a, a reference mix. You never want to send your client without anything. Now, as you've been going over with your, your mentor, the importance of headroom in each mix is very important right so what you need to do is, especially when you're printing out these rough mixes for your client you gotta make sure they're a bit uh, loud because they want to play it on their car they want to make sure that they could hear it they don't want to make it you know they don't want it to be too low now when let's say when when you're printing rough mixes and they're low you may be asking why is it too low that's that's totally normal but when you're when you're giving this product to your client you're gonna want um, to, to make it a bit louder. So, as, as I was mentioning, you, you guys know the importance of headroom. So here is my uh, sub, my overall sub. I'm at a negative 10, right? We want to bring this up, right? We want to bring this up um, about plus 7, plus 8. This is just, um, just to, just for our clients. Right, we just to print it, right? So what I would do is just bring it up. And the other thing I would do is limit the whole mix. Now when I say limit, don't don't squish it all the way. We just wanna make we just wanna give the perception that it the perception of it being mixed for the client, right? The client wants to at, at least be inspired when they hear this rough mix. Why? Because what they're going to do is not only they're going to play your mix, even though you, you guys just cut the vocals and it's not fully mixed, but then they're going to play uh, a professionally, you know, a professionally released uh, song. Subconsciously, they're going to want it to at least sound around the same ballpark, right? You never want your, your client to... to to be with a product that is not up to par, that's something that you wouldn't be proud of. So what I would do, honestly, just bring up a limiter and kind of, um, kind of make sure it all gels together. Bring up a little bit. Slower on the attack, quick on the on the release. And we have to be careful, guys. On this. We have to be careful. Uh, because we're affecting the whole mix. That's very, very, uh, very sensitive. You don't, well, you don't want to squish your whole thing because you really could, could, could uh, butcher the whole mix, right? Bring down the threshold. Now, the most important reason that I'm limiting uh, the whole rough, this is, guys, this is just for a rough mix, mind you. Um, the reason I'm doing it is because if we don't, if we don't put it in a box, if we don't squish it a little bit at least, when the verse comes, you're going to hear the drastic change. It's going to be much lower. So your client's going to find themselves in the car, bringing the volume up, bringing it down, bringing it up, bringing it down. Uh, because once again, this is just a rough a mix. So it's not meant to be uh, fully compressed. It's not meant for that. But once again, uh, let's say this is after a session, uh, you know, it's late at night. You know, they, they want to have something. So just try to limit it, put it in a little, think of it as, as you put it in a box, you're sending it out, uh, and you want to make sure that what you want to listen to is make sure that there's no drastic change between your verse, your pre, and your chorus. So guys, that is how to make a rough mix much louder. Take care.